Okay, so I'm going to talk about kind of a thinking of a movement phase for this area with a little bit of this in mind to try to feed this. Um, so this the reason I have the camera showing this town, let's make sure I can. here in view is because there are supply points here. Uh, I also put a telespace around so to remind myself. And I'm going to try to use a special movement called rail transport to ship these supplies up to here. There are little railroads on the board and map, whatever. And they will allow you not only trace supply to occur, where you know food and stuff is going down the railroads, it's going to feed all my troops during the supply phase, but also it can actually transport things. Uh, there is a rail cap, and the rail cap is limited to um, a total of 16 uh, points of transport. Uh, for, well, let me check. Correction, nine points of transport for this turn for the Gadurian Blitzkrieg's two entire map. You can transport units as well. Uh, a regular unit's worth roughly one supply point with uh, some, sometimes less, sometimes more, depending on the size of the unit. Not going to transport units necessarily right now, I'm going to transport supplies. So I want to think about how many supplies I want I need up here before I start moving the front line. I'm probably going to want a lot of these are leg unit guys right here. So I'm probably going to want, but this group right here does need supply points to move. So, but there is secretly a truck for these black counters here that indicate, I'll just leave that right here, and they indicate that um, that truck is assigned to that formation, and that truck has supply points in it that will supply these guys if they decide to move, and they do need supply points to move um, mostly. I also need supply points to attack. And I think there's also two more supply point tokens under it here. Supply points, not tokens. Yeah. And given what I see here, we're probably going to need like, let's see, one. I'm probably going to want more than that over here. So I might ship or rail transport um, to here, some supply points. And I'm paranoid, so I'm going to check the camera to see how that looks. Yeah, okay. Now, when you rail transport, you cannot just pick up and drop off in any hex. The, the rail lines that have a town or a headquarters in combat mode in it are considered detrainable hexes where trains can pick up and drop off. So uh, trains are so uh, this is a town right here or a city, and it's on a railroad, so that's a detrainable hex. It can uh, go off the map but back onto it, and um, the idea being there's rails behind off the map that can get back on as as reasonable, and it's going to go all the way up here, and um, this is a headquarters, so that's a detrainable hex, and the headquarters in combat mode to allow that, so I'm going to drop off supplies here. Though I want to say, one, two, three, four, five, 
Yeah, and that's going to make more sense than leaving it say. Oh, this is a detrainable hex here, here too, and this has supply points. And I'm actually going to then. Um, yeah, that is that is a place. Or is that a village? <sighs> gonna have to remind myself about rules flipping in a second, but point being, I'm gonna ship supply points up here, either to this hex right up front, or to um, the town, or maybe the village if the rules are right about that. Let me remind myself, I have to remind myself the legend here. Okay, yeah, that is a detrainable hex. Because uh, the rules say like villages have to be detrainable hexes, and if that was a town, there are no towns on this board, just villages and major villages. So the very first thing I'll do is rail transport, which is part of the movement phase. Haven't even moved a piece yet. All right. Here we go. The first piece, not a combat one, but the piece nonetheless, is going to move. And let's say, given what we have here, I'm going also for the telespacer here. We have two supply points. And we have another two over here, correct. I'm probably going to want to ship, let's just say, Given what I see here, let's ship for tricky. supply points up there. Just eyeballing it. So time to move some counters. Whee! So I gotta, all go, gotta go all the way to my counter box and I will leave So under the stack that I just picked this up, since there were four tokens left uh, here, I'm going to put leave two there, because I'm essentially just making change. And then this supply two supply points is going to go on the rails all the way up here and drop off, pick up and drop off at that village up there that's guarded by a nice uh, flak unit, actually. And just, let's see. Just to keep change tidy, I'm going to do this. And that has four supply points there now. And I'm going to write down. that I've shipped two rail caps worth of stuff so far. Transported. Okay. And I cannot, if I wanted to transport it, I cannot daisy chain trans, uh, supply points or units in that once a uh, unit's been moved by some sort of transport, it can't be transported again that turn. Meaning uh, if I wanted to, I couldn't move it by rail and move it by truck in the same turn. So, and let's do, like I said, let's do the back lines. Uh, I have some cavalry defending a town here, and 
They are part of the SST group. So I think they're going to advance, actually. Maybe leave the town a little spare. Well, no. I'm going to put these guys in reserve mode, though. And then I can move them later as needed. I'm also going to pull out some blue markers for where my units in reserve mode are. So that's one reserve counter used. A reserve counter, it's not like one per unit that you're limited to, it's one per tile stack of units that you're limited to. So even though there's two units here, one reserve marker covers them both. And the blue cube is just indicating, hey, there's a reserve marker there. There's actually probably not enough blue cubes for all the reserve markers that I'm going to place. I could move these units in reserve mode. They move a quarter of the movement allowance. And while I'm at it, I have to choose what side they're going to be on before they move, and I'm going to flip one of them to movement mode. Because units in reserve mode, um, because movement mode and combat mode sides matter. All right. We're good there. This guy's just going to stay where he is, um, guard his supply depot. Hmm. Got to check the movement point for trucks to see if. All right, trucks. Trucks entering what looks to be woods, have to spend a lot of movement points. So one, two, yeah, one, two, three. White Woods is three, another three, six. And it couldn't move here, but adjacent's good enough. So what I might do is move this breakdown regiment here forward a little bit. Breakdown regiments here, they are, breakdown is actually a mechanic in this game, where essentially large divisions can leave portions of their uh, division behind as breakdown regiments. They don't have specific unit names, they're just like, like the, a breakdown of the 200th division. And if I move them forward, I'm going to move... I think I'm going to move them into the swamps, probably. Well, we'll move this guy forward, and moving into the woods costs two movement points, so that guy has moved two. He can't move anymore. I could move the breakdown regiment here into this swamp. Um, to uh, get more advance, but I think what I'm going to do is move him right here. It's going to cost, well, how, many, how much does a small cost to move into anyways? Yeah, three moving points. We're fine. Yay, move the first combat units. I'm just going to tilt them sideways to remind myself that I moved them. Hmm, this guy right here, let's see, where is your supply route? How are you getting supplied in the first place? This guy's kind of just stray. Um, like he's in these 
in, in the rough, in some rough woods, and there's no point for him to be there. So trying to keep track of the terrain key here. Remind myself what counts as hills and what counts as rough. A lot of swamp in uh, in the north map, in the Gadurian's Blitzkrieg 2 map. Alright. Quickly I'm going to also get my glasses on. So hooming and hawing, because that's how OCS rolls. Don't want to move the front line just yet, like I said, so I'm going to move this guy next. I want to say that this is a hill. Though there are no actual... Yeah, that has to be a hill, given the coloring of the map from what I'm seeing. Which is odd, because that means there's no rough at all? Uh, GB2? Oh well, yeah, that makes more sense to me anyways, that it's like hills and not like closer to mountainous terrain style stuff. Alright. Well, this guy's on a hill. He's probably going to go... Let's see, one... And then, how much does a hill cost to move through anyways? Alright, so this guy actually is in supply from this headquarters here. And this headquarter is... Yeah, so this guy is technically in supply. Uh, I could also move him down. So I have a choice of moving him down this way or up this way. And I want to break through this line here a little bit. I think... But I also don't... I also do want to stop these guys. I might just leave this guy here. Just chill. It's fine. It's fine. So... Next up... I will fuel the SST, the TSS uh, division. These guys are going to be fueled by headquarters. And probably this supply point here is going to fuel them. There's wagon points under here. That's fine. You can fuel from wagon points. That is totally allowed. And that frees up the wagon points too, which is nice. Alright, so I'll mark the SST division on its fueled side. So any t so all of its pieces can move just fine. Herg. Mark these guys as ready to roll. Okay. I'm going to grab uh, the SST pieces themselves and just remind myself what they look like. They're all the way back in the holding boxes uh, sheet that is several feet away. So this little token here represents a stack of three units. It's like a little holding marker. And these guys are, we have a motorized, uh, two motorized divisions or regiments, motorized infantry regiments, 
they have a combat side of leg movement and a flip side of truck movement. And then we have a truck, uh, a recon unit that has some track movement points, and that is what the SST needed to be fueled with. Might try some overrun combat here. The only trick is that all of these units have are pretty heavily defended. So, but you know what? That's fine. It's fine. What I'm also going to do, before I move these guys, I can fuel and then move later, which is nice. I'm going to leave these guys to the side. Is I'm going to move this unit right here, but in a weird way. I'm going to leave a breakdown regiment where this 20-24-3 division is. Essentially, I'm going to make it lose one of its four steps, its four maybe hit points, if you will, which represents like the size of the divit of the division. And one in that that one thing I lost is going to be a breakdown regiment. So now I have to go fetch breakdown regiments. Yay! These are the case blue ones, so they're a slightly different color, but that's fine. And take a step loss marker, indicating its step loss markers are adorable. They're these little skulls with like a number on them, indicating how many steps have been lost. Since normally you um, indicate step losses in these games by flipping marker over its side uh, on a different side, but that's not feasible in this game because the flip sides are modes. So a step loss marker looks like that. There we go. One step loss, one thumb, two step loss. There you go. Okay. So, going to mark with a tweezer because this is such a tight fit grouping of units that this guy got a step loss and then fly the piece all over the place. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm moving him forward here. Now, I don't have to worry about zone of control right here because um, this is all leg movement. So we're leaving a breakdown regiment right here. And then I'm going to do the division right here. And they're done with their movement now, because uh, that was Hill, because uh, they're essentially stuck where they are. Alright. There was a reason I did that. that is to do what's called a hip shoot. So I haven't talked about air units yet, but essentially uh, there's, there's airplanes in this game and they can bomb stuff. And we have an air base down here at A1221.
And this guy is going to go and bomb, um, is going to do what's called a hip shoot. Essentially, we can assign airplanes to go bomb stuff. I gotta find out, now hip shoots is a special bomb while moving maneuver, uh, where if a unit that's finished their movement is next to an enemy unit, they can do some bombing. Um, the axis, and now hip shoots are only allowed by, uh, the, special, by the rules of the game. Uh, the Russians can't hip shoot at all. Uh, the Luftwaffe can. Uh, that is the Germans' airplanes, though their Axis allies, the... Okay, I had to pause because of what I just said. But no, the Axis' is, um, other nationalities, like the Hungarian, Romanian, Croatian, and Slovakian and Italian air forces cannot hip shoot. So for a hip shoot, you have to have a spotter, which is the unit next to where the barrage is happening. And that, that spotter must have finished their movement already, which we do have a unit that just moved in there. They're done. And they're going to do some bombing the shit out of that place. Well, let's look at the terrain. I can't inspect the stack under this yet. Oh, boy. But I can't inspect the terrain under it. Yep, definitely bombing the shit out of that. So, I'm going to mark this with a little airplane, a little adorable airplane. And then I'm going to pull out the nice giant table sheet. Operational Combat Series comes with um, two copies of charts and tables, one for each player, theoretically, even though I'm playing by myself. Judge me all you want. And there is a giant combat table, but there's also a barrage table. So the very first thing we do is we roll for flak. Um, airplanes have a chance of getting bombed. Um, We are, so basically I roll two dice, if I roll an 11 or higher, the aircraft's going to take a damage before it gets a chance to bomb. Aircraft can take two hits before they die. This would theoretically be the Russian player rolling if I was playing not solitaire. There's modifiers that make this flak roll, that add to this flak roll, but we don't have any. It's a pretty safe run. I rolled a two, meaning that that aircraft is totally hunky-dory. Now the aircraft is going to barrage. Um, the barrage strength. So just a little summary of what aircraft stats are. The barrage strength of the aircraft is 12, and the reason I can tell that is because aircraft have a couple of numbers on their token. Um, Okay, come on, come on camera, please focus on, on the aircraft here. Okay, there we go. So the leftmost bottom number is the combat rate, air-to-air -air combat of the thing. The triangle F means this is a fighter, I'm using a bomber over there. The bottom right number is the barrage rating. Fighters are not good at bombing, but they're good at air-to-air -air combat. Top right is the name of the aircraft. The yellow 44 that's barely visible um, is the range of the aircraft. The aircraft, in this case, is well within range. The aircraft here it has a range of 106 hexes. So, like, it could go all the way to the other end of this map. It couldn't go all the way down to the case blue side of things, but it's a pretty far-reaching bomber. Um, so barrage rating starts out at 12. Um, Alright, so I'm looking at the 12 column. Then I look for some column shifts. 
where I'm going to shift it left and right depending on modifiers. First off, the density of the hex. How many uh, regimental equivalents are in the hex? Is this is like fucking surgery sometimes. There are five. That is going to shift to the right two columns. 2540. We're not in close or very close terrain. There is a correct spotter. The unit is not in strapped mode that I'm bombing, which would be really bad for that unit. The mission is not close uh, to the airbase, per se. So we're rolling on the 25 to 40 column. So, roll two dice, and see what I get. I rolled a five. Five on 25 to 40 is a disorganized result. Perfect. Well, not perfect. Perfect would be like make them taking damage, mind you. And then this aircraft goes under the airbase that it flies back. It can fly back to any airbase nearby, but it's going to fly under back to the airbase of Colm. That's not in range of any supply points, so it might fly under to something else. You know what? Nah, you, you can just chill. Hmm. Tricky because one, two, three, four, four, five. This poor guy does not have any air bases that can reach it, I think. Air base is what I'm talking about. Any um, aircraft that can reach it. So I might dump a supply point here later or something. We'll see. So that's done. I'm going to get a yellow cube. To mark Stent's aircraft. Okay, and then, so, now I'm going to conduct overrun combat, and what I'm going to, so I'm going to start moving the SST, this, these guys over here, now that they're freshly bombed, um, and we're going to conduct combat, which is, Nice. Let's see. How do I want to combat away here? And is there a... There is a combat unit there, but it's weak. Alright, so... I'm just thinking of the mode of operation I want to put these guys in. I'm going to put one infantry division in regular mode, and then the other two, or in combat mode, and then the other two in move mode. Or what? Basically, I'm going to put one of them in move mode and the other two in combat mode. So essentially, let's span these guys out. These guys are going to attack that. There's three units, so I need three supply tokens. And we can throw them from really two sources, either from here through this HQ or from here through this HQ. So which dump do I want to dump the points in? <laughs> Probably this one right here, because I feel like I'm going to be pushing units this way um, otherwise. So. We'll be spending... That'll actually drain that supply point source though, so... 
It would cost three tokens. Let's spend the three tokens from here. So this is down to, that was at four supply points. Now it's down to three tokens is a quarter of a supply point each. So I'm down to three supply points and one tiny token. Let me get that. So it costs one token per unit attacking. This is the start of the battle. Then it costs um, just either two tokens total or um, one if there's less than a, a regiment or less there. There is more than that there. So I have to spend two tokens over here to, to defend with these guys. And we can do that with supply dump right here. Yeah, because one, two, three, four, five, good enough. And then this guy is going to throw right there. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, either way. This guy, so this guy's going to get, uh, we're going to spend two tokens over here. There are four tokens there, so it's down to, or four supply points, we're down to three and two tokens. Whee! So that combat, so now we've determined that both sides are supplied. Now we determine combat odds. This is going to be tricky because I think this guy is in a wreck right now. Um, let me just remind myself the combat flow here. Pretty sure I got it down. I'm going to need this giant chart anyways coming up. All right, so the second thing I do is I identify which unit is leading the attack and which unit is leading the defense. Um, I'm going to have the low combat mode, the guy in the, I'm going to have a mechanized infantry lead the attack. No, that's not right. We'll have, yeah, we'll have mechanized infantry lead the attack with the one that's not in this truck mode. Yeah. Should have flipped these differently, but I'm not going to rewind too much in this game or it'll never end. Or I'll never get anything done. It's not going to end anyways, but whatever. The disorganized guy here. The lead defender will be this guy right here, the top guy, 1333. So, and you determine a lead attacker for their action rating. This guy has an action rating of 4. That guy has an action rating of 3, but it's down to 2 because they're disorganized. Then we determine the initial odds. Uh, the defender also gets to choose their terrain choice for the fight. In this case, it's just open ground. So the odds are probably not good for the attacker, but we'll see where we can get here. So the attacker has 12 plus Another four, but it's double because this is a armored unit going into battle. Um, basically, uh, combat the, the terrain dictates different combat strengths uh, for attacking like mechanized units and armored units, tanks and cars and stuff. In open ground, these guys get double, so we have sixteen plus four twenty versus. I think there's a 13 and a 12 down here. So 13 and 12 is 25, but it's halved uh, because of the disorganized marker here. And you do not round fractions until later. So 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. 
So we have 20 to 12 and a half. Um, so the way you determine odds is you take the higher number and divide it by the lower number. And that is the odd ratio. So instead of doing it in my head, I'm pretty sure it's 2 to 1 odds, but... It's 1.6 to 1, or, um... Which, yeah, that rounds up to 2 to 1 odds. Interesting. And you do round, and so there's a rounding rule in this game, just to make it easier on the math, where uh, if uh, there's a fraction when you're determining stuff like that, if the fraction is 1.5 or higher, you round up, or 0.5 or higher, you round up. If the fraction is less than 0.5, you round down. So 0.6 rounds up, and so 1.6 is 2 to 1 odds. So 2 to 1 odds in open terrain, but not, we don't roll just yet. First I roll for something called surprise, where basically if I, um, we roll to see if the attacker or the defender gains a natural advantage against the enemy through tactical surprise. Um, if I roll a, now surprise is more likely to happen in, the, in an overrun combat as opposed to regular combat, we're doing overrun combat. On a 9 or higher, the attacker will gain surprise on the on a uh, on a six or lower. The defender will gain surprise. I am adding two to this rule because I take the difference in action ratings and um, and apply that modifier to the roll. The difference right now is plus two to the attacker. So, or so uh, I add two to this roll. Let's roll high. <laughs> I rolled a 3. That is a 5, even with the plus 2, meaning that the defender gains surprise. I roll a second die, and that's how many columns I shift. I'm on the 2 to 1 column right now. I rolled 5. I rolled 5 to the left. Welcome to Operational Combat Series Combat. So, the story so far is that the SST division here is going to run into here, but they got ambushed by this disorganized troop here, annoyingly enough. So, two to one, one, two, three, four, five, that is the lowest column of table we're at. We're at a, so I was right here, one, two, three, four, five. I'm on the one to five column now, the, the defender has amazing odds. Now I actually roll for the combat result, and I add two to this roll, the action rating difference also applies here. I rolled a 8 plus 2 is a 10. The attacker loses one and has an option of one, and um, loses one unit piece and has an option of either retreating the stack or uh, losing a piece again. So I'm going to make, and the first loss has to be the act unit as the action rating. So this poor guy's dead. And then I'm going to just retreat the other two. They're going to retreat over here. And the defender, so I did roll at least a little high here. The defender has the option of moving, uh, either has the option of losing a step or retreating back one. Uh, it's actually going to lose a step because it has enough units there to suffer. Um, and it's Russians, they, they all die. Okay, that was incredibly callous, but whatever. Bitter humor. Love it. And we're going to mark, put a step loss marker under that unit that was uh, defending the 13-3-3 um, Russian division. So now they have one less step. 
That also means that their attack rating is going to be half when they fight. Uh, if they have two less steps, their, their defense rating will as well. As the rules per step loss, it's weird. But what, don't worry about it. There's too much in this game already. Okay, and the stack's a little taller now because I put a marker under it. Even better. So I move, so this guy's done moving. They failed their overrun and now they had to run away. So they're done. Um, I still have this tank here that can move in and try to fight that, but that's not good. That's even worse odds. Um, so I'm going to leave that guy be. This guy could run in here, but their attack rating is 10 at this point in time. So they're weaker, even if they move in there. We could try Overrun. I am going to wait till... Overrun is a better roll, but I'm attacking at a one-to-one -one column, I think. Lightwoods is close to in close terrain. So terrain has uh, several... can affect the combat table as well. Uh, depend, there's uh, open terrain is considered... Is, um, the odds are on the open column. The, uh, and then there's a, above it a close column and a very close. And that determines essentially um, the column you start on. Lightwoods is considered close terrain. And that's basically in favor of the defender. So that's not a great battle if I go here, is what I'm saying. Um, well, I might leave these guys just static then. I don't think overrunning is really feasible, and this is a major river, I think. Well, that's a minor river. That's a major. Major rivers are a darker blue. So a minor river, I gotta check the terrain cost on that, because I could possibly... Minor rivers are easy to defend against. Oh, that's awful. They wouldn't be able to. Yeah, so leg units can. This guy could attack over this river here, but it would be at half strength, and this guy's already at half strength. So that would suck, is what I'm getting at. And it's in a swamp. That's no good. None of that's any good. So, do I want to attack here with this guy? Cause overrun into that spot? Maybe. I don't really lose much if I overrun there. Yeah, I'm going to overrun into that hex right there. So, let's do the odds again. Oh, I can hip shoot again though. Because there's other units that finish their move next to it, so I'm going to hip shoot that guy to weaken that fight a little bit. So let's see if I have another airplane nearby that can do some bombing. So perhaps 14 11. I have. or 4 11. I do have some bombers, but those are transport point ones. What about Hex 1412? I do have another bomber. Alright, so this guy's going to fly over here and bomb and hip shoot this guy. Okay, the regiment. So first I roll for Plaque. 
Did not roll an 11. Then I roll. So the bra's strength is 12. The density is no shifts on that. It is close terrain, so it's on the 8 to 11 column. So I roll. I rolled a 10 on the 8 to 11 column. And that is a half chance of that unit taking a step loss. On a 4 to 6, I get a step loss. I got a 6. So that was a really successful bombing. Oh, I should just grab a stack of step loss markers. All right. In that unit, it's going to be disorganized as well. This is just dandy. We are in dandy territory here. And this guy's done with his hip shoot, and he's going to fly back to base. And mark this guy with a step loss. And knock over pieces, grand. And disorganized marker. Great. Come on. Move in. The step loss marker is too tiny. Wee, pieces. All right. Initiate combat with this guy. We are going to do more overrunning. Well, there's only one lead attacker on the, uh, that guy. He needs to spend two supply points, I think, or two tokens to attack. And we do have that. So we are down to two tokens and three supply points, I think. Or two supply points and three tokens. And then this guy is going to roll. Now I could use, um, could make the guy, if I'm out of tokens to attack, uh, supply point tokens, I can do, use internal stocks. But that's basically a bad idea, so let's not talk about that. All right, the defender can spend their, they're down to one regiment, so they actually only need to spend one token this time. And they are going to do so. Yeah, because that would cost three, eight. Yeah, that's in range for supply. So roll for so the odds are five and a half, or five and a half, two and three quarters, two point seven five to uh, ten. But that's four lines, I think. Yep, four to one odds. In close terrain, roll for surprise. Let's roll high now. I'm just going to roll three dice this time and make the third color die be the surprise result. Oh boy. Plus, so I rolled a four plus four is eight. So no surprise, thank God. Um, no surprise for the attacker. We're on four to one odds in close terrain. Not a bad roll here. And I rolled a five plus four is nine. The attacker has an option of one, and the defender loses one, has an option of one. Um, so as an attacker, I could retreat a hex. 
Or I can make this guy take a step loss. I don't like the step loss option because this guy's almost dead if he does that. But if I retreat, that's also bad. So, what do I want to think here? But he could get destroyed if I don't. And this guy's still going to die either way. I'm going to have this guy retreat. And he will take a step loss. Alright, so let's get another step loss marker here. This guy's going to retreat down into the swamp and the railroad, and I'll get somebody else to get back here. And this guy's dead. So we got a dead Russian division here. Okay. Oh, this guy didn't take the step loss. Yeah. I decided to not purvey that situation. Okay, what I might do is have some cavalry come in later, we'll be fine. Okay, these guys have moved already, this guy's moved. That moved, that can't move because it's done. Don't want to move those guys because that's dangerous. So we are done with movement on this end. And so that's an example of how um, movement can look like. Ex though there's not a lot of, though in uh, some games there's a lot more forward movement here, um, just because. Oh, do I want to set anybody in reserve? Yeah, I do. I want to set another reserve marker here with the flak guy. Let's just set them both in reserve, all of that in reserve, actually. Just in case these backline guys need to do anything. We'll set the truck into movement mode, lest it need to do shenanigans. So... Mnemonics are placed down, my reserve units are placed down. Do I want to put this guy in reserve? I don't think so. I want to keep him in combat mode to prohibit silliness. And then that is this top part. And that's an example of what uh, a movement mode uh, phase will look like for one section of a very large map just to remind you of the scope of what I just did. And I'm going to have to do this for the rest of the map. We'll be detaching this a little bit.
so I just did this area. I have this, 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 all the way down there to do. So I'm obviously not going to record all of that. I'm just going to give a summary of what happened. Uh, and then I'll do other phases later. Thank you for watching.